We've got a new December season called Clashmas. The pass is just good value for its cost if you spend money on the game. Code OJ, we get a small kickback. Thank you for that. Tier 10 Archer Queen Tower skin. Does that mean there's going to be like a Golden Knight Tower skin? Because there's a Skeleton Tower skin last season. Tier 20 is another Archer Queen emote. The biggest difference is that it's limited. Oh, that is fierce. There's going to be a new Firecracker emote in the shop. That's cute. And then there's going to be a Mega Deck Challenge. A spooky hog, Christmas themed. Here's Piglet! Did, did, did anyone, anyone get that, get that reference? reference? No? no? I'm, I'm, I'm old? old? Okay. And the boosted cards are going to be different. The first week, your snowball is going to be boosted to your king level. The second week, the hog rider is being boosted. The third week, barbarians are getting boosted. Okay. And the fourth week, inferno tower is being boosted. For challenges, we're going to have on December 6th to 10th, classic draft. December 11th to 16th, the royal tournament. So that's going to be tournament standard. On December 16th to 19th, there's the rage challenge. Oh, that's going to be spicy. December 20th to 23rd, we're going to have the touchdown draft challenge. December 24th to 27th is the mega deck where you can win this nice little hog emote. And then there's going to be the 12 days of Christmas. On the 14th, there's going to be a giant chest, 2,000 gold, 350 common wild cards, a gold chest, 2,000 gold, 80 rare wild cards, one gold chest, 2,000 gold, one epic chest, 2,000 gold, five epic wild cards, and one super lightning chest yes. on Christmas. Party mode is going to have 2v2 draft, elixir capture, sudden death, rage, and 3x. For this year, we have the Logmas Arena, which is weird because it's actually Clashmas. On the back of the King Tower, you can see that the Archer Queen's quiver is kind of there. And then in the front, it's just one really big expo building, which I think should actually shoot from far away. I just noticed that the Princess Towers look like massive expos. I love this Christmas background. It's a little bit different. Gives it that little festive feel. Here's a quick message from this video's sponsor, Strikers1945. I grew up in the 90s. I, I grew up in the 90s. Oh, jeez, I'm old. So games like this definitely have a special place in my heart. The memories. The memories. The memories. 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 <sighs> Ain't no way anyone's gonna get through. This is, I call this... The spam with no regard for strategy. Strategy. This classic shooter game has been perfectly remade for mobile devices and it's available on both Google Play and the Apple App Store. It's free to play and the controls are super easy to learn. Just drag around to move your fighter and tap the on-screen buttons to use your bombs and special attacks. It's as easy as one, two, three. I don't know what comes after three though. Oh, oh, okay. I, I, I love the speed. This, this is great. I love how much firepower there is. This is, this is just ridiculous. Now, you can enjoy this arcade classic in the palm of your hand with multiple multiple difficulty levels, achievements, and leaderboards for endless fun. Who doesn't, Who doesn't like, like fun? fun? I am, I am not, not sweating, sweating at all. At all. Yeah, I'm, I'm sweating a lot. Unlock and pilot six different types of World War II fighters. This is my ship now. And try your best to clear each mission to get the final boss. If you're up to the challenge. Challenge, 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 challenge. challenge. Oh. Huge thanks to Strikers1945 for sponsoring this video. Again, the game is free to play. It's easy to pick up and it's super addicting. Make sure you check out the link in the description down below to download today on iOS, on Android, whatever you want. Look how much firepower I have. Y'all see me dodge those? Nobody beats OJ! No! And then we have all of these different balances. From here on out, all spawner buildings, including Furnace, Goblin Hut, Barbarian Hut, and Tombstone is going to have a death spawn. And every single one of their lifetime years is going to be reduced by roughly 10 seconds. It's going to decay a little bit faster, but they're going to spawn a little bit faster as well. So because of these buildings that don't exist in the map as long, they're not going to be that good defensively. And most importantly, this is kind of reworked so that you can't keep stacking too many spawners on the map and make a Sim City kind of deck. The Furnace, it's going down from 49 seconds to 33 seconds, but spawn one second faster with one extra fire spirit at death spawn. It's going to deal one more fire spirit worth of damage, which is kind of a lot. But the health is being nerfed by 17% from 1017 to 848. That's 169 less health, which means that spells are going to be more effective at countering the huts. Goblin hut's going to spawn 0.5 seconds faster. Now a goblin pops out for a party every four seconds. The lifetime is kind of reduced from 40 seconds to 31 seconds. And the health is nerfed to 848, just like the furnace. This means that if you poison it, the poison will counter much more effectively just because it has way less health. So you're technically countering one more wave or something like that. But this timing isn't completely perfect because it just barely misses.
this is the death spawn wave and those will connect to your tower if you wait a little bit longer your poison can clip the wave and completely deny that last death spawn wave the barbarian's lifetimer is reducing from 50 seconds to 40 seconds 40 is still a long time but this is a seven elixir card the barbarian waves spawn every 10 seconds now this means that barbarians just keep on coming and coming and coming this makes really slow units like mega minion or musketeer really good on your side because they can address these spawners without needing to cross the bridges because they're so slow at moving health is reduced from 1378 to 1166 so poison and earthquake are really going to wreck all of these spawner buildings now tombstone though it's taking a bit of a different approach the health is staying at 530 at a tournament standard of course but its spawn is going to be 3.8 seconds it's going to be a little bit slower but it's going to spawn two skeletons now that means it's going to counter the prince better but a dark prince not as well just because it trickles a little bit less but more skeletons fire is spirits their jump range is actually slightly shorter now it's not too noticeable but their jump range is going from 2.5 tiles to two tiles it's a little bit shorter but short enough that it's not going to jump on the musketeer it's going to be able to counter it that slight jump range was really precisely calibrated so that she just can counter all the waves again after the reworked furnace from two fire spirits to one it's really different of course if it's really close she's still gonna get jumped on and then the executioner got a 5% health buff. That's 64 more health. It's hard to describe how impactful that really is, but it's going to survive one more hit from an archer. It might survive one more hit from a minion. It really depends on the macro scale of the interaction. Oh my word. They buffed Rascal Girls. 9% faster hit speed. I, I can't see it, but I know that's going to be a lot more damage. They were already pretty balanced and really strong. Their reasoning is that the use rates have been really low for a long Long time this small buff should put them back in the map this is not a small buff this is a massive buff they're gonna be able to counter things like giant slightly more effectively hog riders are gonna get one less head on the tower because of these really small interactions and with the increase in the dps goblin cage the most balanced defensive building in the game is getting a 23 percent health nerf oh so they said that the coolest thing about the goblin cage is that the goblin brawler is inside a single tough unit that can counter push once the cage is destroyed we want to keep him kicking butt without nerfing the the defensive part of it oh 23 percent that's really drastic it's still gonna serve its purpose for countering battle rams and things like that in that regard it's still gonna be really versatile it's still gonna tank one shot from a balloon it's still gonna pull the giant from the center i think it'll still be viable 742 health yes the mother witch 18 percent health nerf she's still gonna die to fireball this nerf changes it so that she's now gonna die to arrows and zap so they're kind of buffing arrows and zap indirectly and with the spawner rework poison's buffed so fireball might phase out of the meta in favor of zap arrows poison tesla's hit speed is decreasing by nine percent that's 1.2 that's roughly 20 less damage per second oh you can hear it it's slower it's gonna have a rough time countering minions now it's gonna take one more hit to take out balloon or world giant and stuff like that they're buffing battle ram the battle ram already got indirectly buffed by the golden knight connection damage plus eight percent so charge can deal up to 572 damage oh my goodness with this small buff they want to make battle ram relevant again and open the choices and possibilities of other win conditions that's fair but that just really buffed bridge spam and bridge spam was the number one and number two used deck in the challenge i think I don't quote me on that oh they just changed ice wizard so that he has a spawn splash inflicts slight damage and slows down units on his spawn why doesn't wizard get this buff why does only ice wizard get it and why does electro wizard get it what happened to regular wizard original wizard did he just take out those bats excuse me and why does the spawn damage deal less than his regular attack the ice wizard spawn damage will take out skarmy but it won't kill plus one skarmy his attack does take care of plus one skarmy with his new spawn thing that's not an invitation to just put him on top of a mega minion mega minion's gonna get two hits on it if you see a mega minion coming you're gonna want to put the ice wizard far away so that it just slows it down from coming to the ice wizard so they can fully counter it properly like a normal person so this really nice it just he just takes care of skarmy like that that's so satisfying that's such a massive buff the ice wizard and a massive nerf to skarmy but uh if there is a plus one skarmy he's not gonna kill it like his attack does and he's just gonna disintegrate you do not want to do that for regular minions you want to put him right there but let's say you were low on elixir and you needed to splash it down that's actually not a bad play 
But what is a bad play is putting him down on top of a minion horde. It's a heckin' minion horde. Keep your distance. Slow him down. Let the splash do its work from far away. His spawn damage isn't that good. It takes care of bats. It takes care of skeletons. But it doesn't take care of spear goblins. This is actually really nice against something like the dark goblin because it slows down the dark goblin. There's a ton of examples. Use common sense. And don't put him down on Skarmy just because you can. He's still going to counter Skarmy from far away. That's going to be way safer. And you can build up a push from further back without taking any damage. It's very situational, but it's a nice bonus. I have no idea why, but they increased Dark Goblin's damage by 9%. He's going to be able to take things out a little bit faster. The speedy guy is going to deal more damage to Hog Riders and Giant. But how well? The Giant's still going to get some hits. I'm more curious about how it's going to fare against like a Hog Rider. 9% more damage. You can see his health just melt. It's roughly the same, given if you have skeletons or if you have tombstone or a goblin cage to pull it interactions are completely different there's not a significant interaction change it's going to kill things one shot faster but for smaller units it's still going to take three shots to kill the archers so nothing changes on a micro scale it will be able to address a balloon one shot faster but what does that mean that it'll defend it a little bit better you can't really measure it but you're going to win a little bit harder but you can't see it if that makes sense that's all the balances that we have hope you all enjoyed this thanks for watching if you want to check out more videos they're going to be up there if you want to subscribe